I like frightening my friends and I enjoy being scared also. I came here this weekend to feel my flesh crawl and to get goosebumps and to feel my hair stand on end. I'm just a gore freak. I write the books, I see the movies, I know the people, you gotta be here. This is where it's happening. This is Fangoria in 3D. Plata, man. The more horrible, the better. Oh, I'm in the fantasy here in the mud and guts. <laughs> Mom hates him. She thinks I'm sick. A lot of blood and guts and half the body, getting ripped apart and stuff like that. I like that kind of stuff. My parents think I'm crazy. I think they're kind of gross. <laughs> I think some movies have tasteless blood and guts. That's it. That's what this convention is all about. And the other ones where you see girls getting hacked up in bed, those are okay. Blood, guts, seared flesh, open wounds, chop chop, slice and dice, all of it. Garden shears, big ones, sharp ones, long ones. It's, it's fun. It's fun to be scared silly. It's great. Uh, ice picks, razor blades. I want to get into special effects. Uh, chainsaws, of course. That's 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 classical. That's the uh, Shakespeare of, uh, of of horror movies. I'm a school teacher. Engineer. Computers. I'm from Pasadena. Chicago. Seattle. Denver. Ohio. New Jersey. Hollywood. Horror City, dudes. It's a release from work. I work at Sears. I live in El Monte, and we're from a video store down there. I work in hardware, retail sales. Good morning, humans, and uh, welcome to the Weekend of Horrors. There are people here from all corners of life. There are uh, as you can see, look around at yourselves, young, old, uh, male, female, people get into splatter and uh, makeup and filmmaking and rock and roll and everything that's uh, in any way related to this field here for 48 hours devoted to uh, the wonderful world of horror. You're a nice looking bunch of people to be uh, here for something like this. <laughs> and, uh, one thing is certain. Uh, you're going to meet some new friends here this weekend who share your special interests in things to do with this field. And you'll have the opportunity, I think, to step outside of your Monday through Friday routine, put on a costume or some makeup, or in some way enjoy living a little bit of a fantasy here this weekend. And I encourage you to do that, to have fun doing it, and to make the most of it. Thanks for coming, have fun. I wanted to see if he's really as ghastly as people say. Freddy Krueger, right here. Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. Fred Krueger, Nightmare on Elm Street. We're Fred Krueger fans. This is my Fred Krueger mask. I made it myself uh, from the sculpting on up. This is my claw. I was filling in some time off of a V, my hiatus from V, went in on a general audition, wanted to work for Wes Craven, and, and just your basic general audition. I think they wanted someone really large sort of big, monolithic in size, 
absolutely evil for it. And Annette Benson had seen my auditions for class reunion, National Anthem's class reunion. She saw my range, and she thought it might be a sort of a wild card idea to bring in for Freddie. And uh, I guess Wes agreed with her, and I got the part. Dad? special work to do here, you and me. It's just been a coincidence that I've been wanted in a science fiction series, which was uh, V, and playing the character of Willie, which was pretty successful, and uh, and then uh, Freddy Krueger and the nightmare phenomenon, you know. So that's more a coincidence than anything. I mean, I can play a lawyer tomorrow if somebody asked me and would be very happy to. You've got the body. I've got the brain. Horror films are unique and even more than, say, westerns used to be, uh, are a very inexpensive way to make a film. All you need is a tremendous vision, uh, tremendous energy. Uh, Texas Chainsaw, Last House, uh, Hills of Eyes, all were films done with a very limited cast and a very, usually a rural location where you don't have to pay a lot of permits. And all you need is a great idea and a lot of uh, vision. You go out there and make something that scares the pants off people. And The basis of any movie is to take your hero and chase him up a tree and then chop down the tree, and the horror picture does that in spades. <laughs> Other movies sometimes can make this very abstract, you know, they can do it in a philosophical way or in a, the way the character's life is going, but a horror movie really does it with the fact that the guy chopping down the tree has an axe that he's going to use on you next. So you get very quickly engaged, and uh, I think it's a very immediate very, very simple form. Uh, in that sense, it's classic. I never set out to be an actor to sign autographs or, or drive a Mercedes, but I must confess that I do like the attention. I've never had any problem with the fans. I think it's because I've been both in movies for so long and television that fans either are watching me in an old movie on cable or they've just seen me on something on a guest star. And so they, when you're in their living room, they kind of treat you like you're one of the family. I think when I look back on it, I enjoyed my whole life of making up stories that scared my friends. <laughs> The interesting thing that's happening now, I think really uh, as a result of uh, films like Nightmare on Elm Street, is that we're getting into what I have coined as rubber reality, which is uh, films that deal with the way that reality can be distorted and permeated, uh, going into dream states, into dr in states of madness, and uh, dis uh, all sorts of strange illusions that uh, haven't been treated in film since Cocteau, I think. And uh, so in that sense, they're becoming less blood and guts and more uh, hallucinatory, which I think is basically what films are anyway. very intelligent fans. They're very in, in the detail. Consequently, I have learned from my fan mail and from talking at the sci-fi conventions that they pay just as much attention to details in my performance. Little physical bits that I might do, uh, elements of the characterization, uh, deliveries, favorite lines. 
mostly actors think only other actors see that stuff. But it's really nice when Joe Fan calls you on that or mentions it or mentions some really subtle moment that you didn't think anybody caught in your performance. And they, not only do they uh, remember it, but they bring it up in, you know, in front of a room full of 500 people. So that's my real treat. We came down basically to see the convention because we're, we're very much into the uh, special effects makeup and splatter technology that's going on in uh, films today. I just always loved horror movies all my life and special effects makeup. And... What we're trying to do is just an improvisational makeup because there hasn't been uh, the time to prepare anything particularly uh, along the lines of prosthetics or pre-molded rubber pieces. I've already put a couple little tubes in the... Uh, Tony's nostrils there to distort his nose, and later I'm going to put just something simple like a cotton ball under his lip here and there to get a, a asymmetrical crooked look to his mouth. No, I've never done this. I've been on a couple of cooking shows, <laughs> but that's very different. I can hopefully have ourselves a kind of a ghoulish uh, character where Tony once sat here in front of the bar at the Ambassador. <laughs> I do a lot of uh, special effects makeup work, and uh, I was hoping to sort of get a break and meet some people here, which I have. And Yeah, I'd like to learn about it and try it out. I drew an awfully lot as a kid and uh, tended to amuse myself more with, you know, pencil and so forth rather than being out playing in sports and things. So that interest dovetailed into the movie interest, and when I got older, I... Uh, found a place in uh, downtown Inglewood, California, where I grew up, where I could get some elementary makeup supplies and did a little bit of experimenting and kind of got bitten by the bug. Uh, it's uh, basically the same story as everybody else. Yeah. We were born strange. Yes. Born strange. It starts with the dinosaur phase, doesn't the it? dinosaur phase. When you're then, six, uh, dinosaurs and Play-Doh and then... And famous and, monsters. Yeah, and, famous uh, monsters and Godzilla and Frankenstein. And the Dick and, Smith makeup book. And, uh, right. And, and then you discover Rick Baker. I started with an interest in special effects uh, films, science fiction horror films, when I was really young, when I was around, I don't know, 10, 11, something in that area. And uh, I've just progressed from there. You know, I've done a lot of work at home, read a lot of books. And uh, Rick Baker, who, uh, who was a Dick Smith protege, he, he's brought, the, brought movie monsters to a, to a new state. I got a chance to see Rick Baker, and she said she'd pay for it, so that's why she came in. <laughs> He's one of the best uh, makeup uh, people we got going. Uh, I uh, was simply a uh, kid who uh, was bowled over by horror pictures, but that would be the same thing I think that Rick Baker would tell you. This is one of the eight characters from Greystoke. This is one that we called White Eyes, and this is uh, one of his five heads. At this point, the mechanism's not working quite well. The rubber's starting to rot. It's an unfortunate thing about what I do is it only lasts a short time. I started out as a 10-year-old kid who just loved the idea of, of becoming a makeup artist. And, and, and that love for that work drove me on. I mean, I worked very hard to, to learn my craft. And I think the best thing to do is just to do a lot of it, do as much any free time that you have, devote to makeup. If you, if you love it that much, you will, and uh, then you get good. I worked with Toby Hooper on a film called Funhouse. What I did there was just design and sculpt a creature for Toby and a makeup artist by the name of Craig Reardon applied it. Horror movies seem to have an audience. I mean, you know, people will go see a horror movie whether it's good or it's bad. I'm one of those people. You know, I usually go to theaters and see them. I've acted in a few things, and, and usually in costumes. And uh, that's the best way for me, I think. It's nicer to be able to hide behind a mask and, and be on film and have your real face out there. I, yeah, I'd be interested in doing some kind of monster or, or lunatic part or something like that, but typecasting.
not scared. It just feels so incredible to have those goosebumps. And, and if there's a nice guy with you to just clutch onto him. I am blood and guts. I mean, that's, that's my whole life. Santa loves horror films. In the real world, I was a tax consultant, but I uh, finally figured 30 years doing taxes was long enough, and I sold my business, and I devote whatever working time I have to this damn foolishness. I got involved in this when I was Nichelle Nichols' business manager, and I used to book her into conventions, and I went along with her and my peddled Leonard Nimoy record albums at the convention. And my Leonard Nimoy albums have grown into my empire. I came down here, thought I'd drag my dad down here. He's really into this sort of stuff. <laughs> thought I'd have him buy me some things. Well, we both had a mutual interest in things dealing with uh, the supernatural. After all, I have a child who I believe is part demon. And um, so we have, a, uh, we have an enthusiasm for monster magazines and monster films. And uh, we've met Rick, Rick Baker on a couple of occasions. And Bob Burns is a friend of ours. Uh, so we are canvassing the dealer's room, checking out all the items, maybe taking in a couple of lectures, seeing the films they have. All in all, it uh, looks like it's going to be an exciting time. Wouldn't you say? Yes, I would say. <laughs> Hi, I'm John Beekler, and uh, I just got back from Rome, where I directed my first feature-length motion picture called Troll. It's uh, kind of unusual because I also created all the special makeup effects and creatures in the picture. <laughs> now I got you. There's elements in it that I hope will make people take pause for a moment to look and say, gee, how did they do that? I picked up a copy of Famous Monsters of Film Land and I was hooked. I love comic books, I love everything there is about the fantasy uh, in general. <laughs> and it's delicious. <laughs> it? I loved Return of the Living Dead. It gave me the opportunity to not be sexy and be more like a punk rocker. And uh, Dan O'Bannon, who wrote Blue Thunder, Alien. Oh, he's wonderful. Oh, God, he's wonderful. He was um, the best director I've ever had, and that including TV and everything. Sorry, other guys, I'm sorry. But um, Dan, I love him. He was just absolutely wonderful. He wrote Living Dead, he directed Living Dead, and he was just a wonderful actor's director. Fear is the only uh, universal emotion. It's the only thing that, uh, in which every human being has identically the same reaction to every stimulus. And therefore, it's uh, the safest thing for somebody who is new or no good to try. Because you can make a terrible horror movie, but if you push certain basic buttons, you're bound to scare somebody. That includes me. In spite of my over-sophistication of seeing horror movies, 
You take me in and sit me down in a bad horror movie, it will jolt me. I think horror is a young person's game. It's a very raw kind of stimulus. A child is going to like uh, a hot dog with mustard on it, and he's just going to hate escargot. Uh, a grown person is going to be the, the reverse. I think young people in general are fascinated with the subject of death, and they try to come to grips with it at a fairly early age. And the easiest way to come to grips with it is to make it into a fantasy, either in, uh, either in the form of humor, jokes about death, or in the form of scary stories and scary movies. There have been so many horror movies made now. You start with Frankenstein, Dracula, go way back then, they were pioneering the classic forms. There finally comes a time where you've done it and done it and done it and done it until it's sterile, and you have to start looking for new approaches. Yeah, I have fun when I'm working. <clears throat> I have fun when I'm glued to the typewriter, thinking up creative ideas. The rest of life, I simply try to make pleasurable, easy. Well, I've always made creatures when I was small, and this is my transition from amateur to professional creature making. Right here is the costume that's going to be featured in the costume convention today, uh, Creech. In the uh, end of 1957, yes, just when I was having a birthday again in November, I created the first issue of Famous Monsters of Filmland magazine. But uh, it grew and grew, and uh, now I have an 18-room home, 300,000 books and magazines and paintings and props from movies. The majority of the rooms in that 18-room uh, house are dominated by... Uh, 18,000 lobby cards and 36,000 hardcover books, 125,000 stills. It was in October 1926, I saw the first fantastic magazine ever came to my attention. It was called Amazing Stories, leapt right off the newsstand, grabbed hold of me, said, take me home, little boy, you will love me. And if you play your cards right in the far distant exotic year of 19. 85 at the world famous ambassador hotel you will find yourself being interviewed by pandoria magazine you know, I, I couldn't believe it at the time but it it all came true let me put it this way gentlemen's quarterly isn't going to be knocking on my door <laughs> this is a real high contrast i'm jenny aspinall i do special effects makeup for, mostly for television and uh, horror films. I recently finished an independent feature called Street Trash. My first film was Toxic Avenger, which I did special effects makeup for. Meet little Melvin. He's a 90-pound weakling. Everyone hated Melvin. Yeah, I'm gonna take this mop and shove it down your throat. They teased him. I'm gonna do it with you. Okay. They taunted him. They tormented him until he had a horrifying accident and fell into a vat of nuclear waste. Transforming little Melvin into a hideously deformed creature of superhuman size and strength. Melvin became the Toxic Avenger. The first superhero born out of nuclear waste. Yes, the muggers and the rapists didn't know what law and order was until the Toxic Avenger came to town. Holy shit! I don't know what it was, but it saved my life. All right, everybody, drop your tacos or I'll blow your brains out. The vandals and the perverts had their way with the little people of Tromaville until the Toxic Avenger ripped them apart. The Toxic Avenger. His face is so terrifying. 
We can't show it to you now. You'll have to see the movie for yourself. The Toxic Avenger can bend steel with his bare hands. Oh, for all the kids! Get it! Leap small cars in a single bound. He crushes drug pushers. Smashes hit and run drivers. And gives all criminals their just desserts. The Toxic Avenger. He was a hero. He's a hero. He's a fighter. He's a lover. Well, Melvin, you're beautiful. The good citizens love him. The fat and corrupt hate him. Kill that bastard for me. You gotta kill him. Yeah? Will he survive? <laughs> For incredible, explosive action, you must see the Toxic Avenger. He's a different kind of hero. I came to see Elvira. I like Elvira because she reminds me of Vampirella. I, I like her humor. <laughs> uh, Elvira? <laughs> you like heart. Elvira? Yeah, I like Elvira. <laughs> She's bigger than life. <laughs> Question. He says, what do I think is the very worst movie I've ever shown on Movie Macabre? That is a good question because everybody says, what's your favorite movie you've ever shown on Movie Macabre? And they go like, my favorite movie? Are you kidding? On Movie Macabre? Uh, <laughs> the worst movie was Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, hands down. <laughs> the idea of Elvira. We'll see my, my dad got really horny and then he jumped on my mother. Hi, you mean you don't know? Who else? Anyone have a disgusting personal question? <laughs> yes? When you bid, please make sure you have the money in your pocket. Raise your hand, yell, scream, we'll acknowledge the bids. If you win, come quickly up the stage. We begin with making up Godzilla in 1985. $19 item from Japan. Secreted over here from Japan. Do I have any bids? One dollar. One dollar once, two. Two once, five. Five once, $19 item. Five twice, sold. Five dollars. We began by running comic book conventions in New York City, as my partner and I are, have, have always been graphic arts and fantasy and science fiction fans. And as we developed the shows down through the years, we took a very strong interest in science fiction and the media, particularly in filmmaking. England has Sir Lawrence Olivier. America has Arnold Schwarzenegger. Six dollar value, do you have any bid? Five. Five once, five twice. Sold five dollars. Can you get it? I hold in my hands a shooting script to a little movie I call Halloween. It's a real pleasure me, for me to be able to say, actually, that my partner Gary and I have been able to take our own fan-oriented loves and interests and turn them into a, a full-time business, of which we're very proud. and. 
Mexico to take creation conventions and develop it further, along with our work with Star Lord and Fangoria in the years to come. We're very excited for the future. Ten dollars, worth more than that. Ten once. Nice item. Ten twice. Twelve all the way in the back. Twelve once. Thirteen, fourteen. Right? Fourteen. Fourteen once. Fifteen, sixteen. Sixteen once. Seventeen once. Seventeen twice. Twenty dollars. Twenty once. Twenty twice. Sold. Twenty dollars. Right on the eye. But it's nice. Nice to have hanging out in the house. I grew up in a house in Connecticut that was built in 1619, the original part of the house. And before my parents bought the house, they were actually warned that uh, not to buy the house because it was haunted. And uh, part of my reason for doing this film uh, was uh, because I believe in it. Aunt Elizabeth. This house knows everything about you. Leave while you can. No! The question was, what do I prefer doing something like a greatest American hero or a film that's really relatively twisted like this one? <laughs> um, I'd much rather do this kind of film. It's much more interesting and more fun. What ever happened to this uncle? Oh, he was diving for abalone off a of point Ray got it. <laughs> Oops, sorry about that. There were times on the set where we all felt possessed. You know, there was, uh, you know, the, there's always excitement when you're working with special effects. You never know exactly what's going to happen when the camera turns, and you just have to be open to, uh, to kind of uh, think on your feet and, and improv with the situation. Come on! Just stop moving for Christ's sake! The first film I did was a film called uh, Here Come the Tigers, which was a G-rated comedy, a kid's, kid's film. And uh, it wasn't a bad little film, but no one went to see it. So we switched over to horror and decided to kill the little buggers instead, and everybody showed up. So that's what happened. doing here I wanted to see you what are you doing with that gun nothing I'm Just start bugging someone that you know that's in the business for a job. That's what I did. And uh, uh, don't give up, because it's hard. And eventually, the survivors, the people that keep trying, will be in the business. I consider my films to be slasher type pictures. I, uh, um, I don't know, I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not one for a lot of bloodletting. I actually have had criticism uh, sent my way that my films are not bloody enough or gory enough. And uh, so um, I guess if I were to deal with it, though, if I were to do it, I would uh, probably do it, go out, you know, do it, go all the way with it. I started making horror films, really trying to give people their money's worth. Myself, I, I was a, a horror buff, sci-fi fan, and I never, uh, and I, that is when I started with Chainsaw before that. I saw very few, very few horror films that, uh, that worked. They gave me really what I was going to see. I felt cheated. So uh, 
That's how Texas Chainsaw came about. And it was low budget. That's about as much money as I could scrape together for one more film. So uh, no matter how small a project is, I would advise anyone who wants to direct pictures to get on with it and somehow find a way to do it. If it's on a $15 budget, if it's on a $200 budget, just do it. Uh, because the opportunity probably won't just come your way. Yes, I have a movie in here, but I'm not sure if I've won. Meryl and I just flew out here from New York uh, to pick up our award for Angel Lust. And uh, I've been to every one of these Cinemagic Short Film Search Awards. I'm up for a 16 millimeter project. And, uh, I'm nervous about it. I don't know what's going to happen. Second prize, Super 8. And it's not just for ice cream. <laughs> I'd like to accept this for the students at North Hills High School who made the film possible. They were the crew and did all the work. Many people don't know it, but in black and white films, we use Hershey's syrup as blood because red photographs as light gray. Now the film is a puppet animated film. Using three-dimensional puppets, each of my puppets has replaceable mouths for lip sync. Five replaceable mouths. For example, C, M. And by replacing these mouths and doing a sound breakdown, I have achieved dialogue. I'll teach you to hide, you silly toothpick. I know I can beat him. If you can beat me, I will clean up. But if you lose, then you sweep up, you silly broom.
Chamber. and I just won the second place in the 16mm Cine Magic film, short film search. I'm really surprised and amazed that I won this award, and I'm really glad I made it out here from Miami. Uh, I met Toe Hooper and Kerry O'Quinn and everybody. I'm totally shocked. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I won third place in Cine Magic short film search. But next year, I'm going to win first, second, and third place. Just you wait and see. I was raised on uh, Mummy. I was raised on Frankenstein. I was raised on King Kong. I was raised on all of these wonderful, scary, frightening motion pictures. And they are classics today, but to me, when I was a little kid, hiding under the theatrical seat of my little town, uh, they weren't classics. They were living, breathing pieces of entertainment life and if today reanimator return of the living dead nightmare on elm street whisper to a scream all of these films are not considered classics and they're just considered live wonderful entertainment that's not to say that in 10 15 years they won't be classics my first uh, science fiction production there was the day the world ended which i produced and roger corman directed and that sort of started me off in the horror and science fiction field. Uh -huh. Then I did pictures like uh, Voodoo Woman and the She Creature, and uh, later on uh, the Atomic Submarine and the Underwater City. I scored over 180 movies, uh, three, a little over 300 TV shows, about 400 radio shows, The uh, Amazing Colossal Man, that was one of my bigger ones. And right now it's playing all over TV, thank goodness. <laughs> When I see Texas Chainsaw Massacre and seeing Piggy running after these guys and gals, my adrenaline starts pumping, my heart starts thumping, and I almost have an erection. I mean, it's one of the most exciting things that I feel a person can do. And when we were engaged 28 years ago, I wanted to impress her, so I took her to a special screening of my six-day, $60,000 epic voodoo woman with Marla English, who was American International's Elizabeth Taylor. And after which she gave me back the ring. She said, if that's the kind of a picture you make, I don't think it's going to work out. Roger Corman saw me working with some other guys in the movie, the production room. He walked up and said, hey, now I got a stinker. We just finished. It's so bad, I can't sell it. And the score is terrible. You want to redo it? <laughs> Pay money for it? Fine. So we haggled for about three or four seconds. And <laughs> we did it. And saved this picture. You have to save the movie. We have terror. We have beauty. We have ugliness, we have uh, frightening things, we have all kinds of charming things, but all of the things together is what makes a whole person a whole life. <laughs>
For seven years, I've been teaching courses at USC, the University of Southern California, but that means nothing compared to being a regular contributor to Fangoria. Really, it's, uh, you, you recognize everywhere if you're a Fango man or a member of the Fango family. If it doesn't have the blood and guts and the thunder and the rips and the tears and the smashes and the slashes, I'm going to walk out on you. So the reason I wanted to uh, do the, uh, the remake to Invaders from Mars is it uh, happened to be one of, uh, one of my favorite pictures. Uh, I think that I'm making a, an homage to William Cameron Menzies' film. Uh, Menzi was a designer, I mean, before a director. He was a great designer, and uh, I spent a great deal of effort and time uh, recreating uh, some of Menzi's designs. I spent a great deal of uh, care recreating the exact images that I know burned holes in my memory uh, from when I was a child, uh, in particular that fence. I spent uh, days recreating, trying to find the exact angle on that hill and, having, and, and tweaking the fence so it would be uh, very close to the, uh, to the fence in Menzies' picture. Small figure in this vast, you know, top, a lot of top. Ones. It's all shot from the child's point of view. Action! So there's uh, up angles, uh, you know. I mean, there is the uh, the the isolation of uh, of the the young boy and uh, trying to get someone to believe him. Uh, and uh, I think I've been very true to that theme. Cut! I think uh, my my treatment of it. Uh, of the remake is actually it's uh, using the original as a very definite foundation and uh, and embellishing it and uh, and and making making it bigger amplifying it what i wanted to to do if possible would be to uh, create a, a quite a wonderful uh, creature that did not appear to be another man in a suit monster he is mankind, developed to its ultimate intelligence. Then there's also a great deal of articulation and mechanics that goes literally just into the animating of the Supreme Being himself, which is his face, his flippers, his eyes, his eyelids, all of the facial movements. Uh, the, he's got these um, organ-like uh, appendages on his sides, which will undulate and pulsate. His veins will be pulsating, so there'll be a lot going on with this, uh, this particular creature who is the, uh, the main bad guy. Roll camera. Lord Parker. A little bit up, please. Sit. There. And action. All right, move it, move it. Hold that small. Your sector of fire is 11 o'clock, 2 o'clock. Oh. You don't want to disappoint the audience of the original picture. It's hopefully more exciting and more uh, believable. I mean, hopefully they'll get nightmares. <laughs> oh. Oh. I love being Fangoria's favorite actor. It makes my day. I mean, I look forward to those copies that have the articles on me and uh, the letters that come in and uh, I'm very pleased with it. There are people who come into this town and they're here for four or five years, they maybe achieve stardom, and, uh, or they may not, you know, the very sad ones. They're here four or five years and they go back to Oshkosh and sell shoes or 
Maybe it's, maybe it's what you do yourself. Maybe that's why they call it the survival factor. I've been here 30 years, and uh, except for a few lean ones, I've survived. I think being in this town and working at what I love to do makes me a lucky man, yeah. If I had to explain horror in, in one word, it's exciting, stimulating. It's disgusting. Blood. Gory. Scary. Suspense. John Carpenter's The Thing. The dark. If it's done well, poetry. It's fun. That's one word. What do you no more questions. Like People look at me and go, ooh, you're morbid. But no, I'm just weird and I'm having fun. Green slimy makeup all over my entire body, which ought to be very fun. Uh, fingers about this long, uh, large black nails, um, stringy black hair, ears out to here. Uh, yeah, we made these ourselves out of just uh, normal things we found laying around the house. Well, I'm putting some adhesive on my face um, so that when I get the mask over my head, I don't have to pull anything aside. Just decided to do a pumpkin for the head around in my head for it. Last week, uh, the drive-in near my house was showing Nightmare on Elm Street. I went in costume and I started walking around the theater and people were freaking out. They were seeing me and when people run from you and scream, you go a little crazy and you chase them and it's great. <laughs> it's like, like a stem sticking out of the ball cap and I'm painting up like a pumpkin. I've got a cape and everything and a big pee on my chest. That's the, that's the fun of horror movies. Fear of being scared, but, but you know you're not going to get hurt. so primitive in your means of communication, you still use phones, when all I have to do to go home is... Absolutely, I like viscera probably more, and the gooey of brain tissues, brain lining, probably better. Blood is too common, everybody does it. Gentlemen, you've seen what acid rain can do. <laughs> He's in mine. <laughs> I said I'd be a pumpkin, and I am. And look at this. My pal Squash is with me here at Bangorian. Check it out.
Oh man, too bloody much. I'm sorry it's over. Oh, what a time, man. How can I go back to reality? Next time I think you should do a month of horrors. Bye, see you. See you next time. Later on, dudes. Adios. <laughs>